This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Everything. Everywhere. Everywhere. All. At once. Is just an all-around crisis directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, a.k.a. Daniels, led by ace acting performances, high-intensity fight scenes, and overall outrageous scenarios. This multiverse family film is favored to clean up at the Academy Awards, where it has 11 nominations. Best Picture, Best Director, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. Best Actress, Michelle Yeoh. Best Supporting Actor, Ki Hui Kwan. Best Supporting Actress, Stephanie Su. Best Supporting Actress, Jamie Lee Curtis. Best Original Screenplay, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. Best Original Score, Sun Lux. Best Original Song, Ryan Lott, David Byrne, and Mitski. Best Costume Design, Shirley Carada. Best oh, Film brother, Editing, wrap it up. Paul Rogers. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 95% and a runtime of 2 hours and 12 minutes this is a movie that i was moving down my list until i saw it for a third time and i'll say it now this is gonna win best picture this is your best picture winner we could talk about how it's favored in a second but this because of its acting performances because of how innovative it is because of how crazy it is with amazing editing feels like the movie that when we look back on this year's crop, we say, "Oh yeah, that was the best picture winner." I got a quick question before we get into it. Uh, when you say when you call it a family film, yes, do you say that as like a "Hey, let's sit down and watch this movie as a family," or it's a family film because it's about a family? I think actually both because uh, when you say "What is it part. about?" when you say "What's it about?" ultimately, it's about family, That's correct? And it's about saving the world. It's about a lot of things, but it's about family. And when I cry at the end of the movie, it's because of the family aspect of it. I agree, but I also think that any movie that features a um, a airborne uh, security guard with his exposed ass landing on a trophy that looks like a butt plug kind of takes it out of the running for family film of the year. It's the, oh, ooh, I don't want to watch this in front of my parents or whatever. <laughs> Who cares? They got watch s- it. swinging dildos in this. Grow up. Yeah, it's got a lot. There's a, there's a raccoon on a guy's head at one point. <laughs> Uh, this, I, I do, uh, this is the second time that I watched it and, um, I still have some of the same problems with, uh, with it as the first time I watched it, which, uh, first and foremost, it is very tough to keep up with. We've gone at length, uh, about universe jumping movies and how confusing they can be and how quickly you, you can lose a viewer. I almost never want them. Same. And this is a universe jumping movie that also just throws in a bunch of confusing stuff for just for the hell of it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's tugging at your heartstrings while legitimately slapping you in the face. So <laughs> yeah. at some point, at a lot of points, actually, you don't quite have your footing. And that's why I loved it on the first watch. I, and the reason I say that I I declare it the best picture winner after seeing it for a third time is because I saw it when it came out. Mm-hmm. I saw it when it first hit streaming. And there's big gaps between that time. And the further I get away from the movie, the more maybe I take it for granted. But then when you watch it again, and you're like, and they did this all in two hours and 12 minutes, exactly an hour shorter than Avatar The Way of Water, which it does you shouldn't so be comparing much, it those movies. It does so but much more in two hours and 12 minutes than what Avatar does in three hours. Banshees of Inisherin is my favorite movie from 2022. But this is the one that I think... Wins. I think that's fair. This is like an editing masterpiece. Yes. It is an editing masterpiece. It's absolutely going to win best editing. There's never been a uh, a more lopsided fight. I believe, let me look, I believe it's close. Really? That surprised me. I mean, I'm not like a, ma- a master editor or whatever, but like the the editing that you see in this movie is crazy. Even from like the very first shot where... They have the family in the yep. mirror, and then they transition to present day with nobody in the mirror, and then the the camera zooms into the mirror, and it becomes the full shot. Like everything about this movie, editing wise and like cin- uh, cinematically, is awesome. As of Thursday, February twenty third, which I'll note as we say anything about this movie, the SAG Awards have not taken place at the time of this, and it won People's Choice. It lost. Uh, best Picture Musical or Comedy at the Golden Globes to Banshees of Anna Sharon. So I still think there is a conversation to be had about Best Picture there. But for film editing odds, it is a toss-up 
with Top Gun Maverick. Minus Damn. 150, according to Vegas Insider. Top Gun Maverick, plus 125. But like a lot of categories this year, uh, including Best Actress, which uh, Michelle Yeoh is situated, two-person race. I-, I would definitely give this Best Film Editing. I want to use the bulk of this time because, okay. uh, as Ki Hui Kwan says at the beginning of this movie... Uh, there's no time to explain. Like if we if we really broke down this movie, which we've done before, we would take forever. And yeah. the one thing I do want to focus on is the acting performances in this movie because Michelle Yeoh is a great example of like the further I got away from it, and then having seen Tar, I was like, no brainer, Tar wins. And I still think that Kate Blanchett does win, but I would not be shocked if Michelle Yeoh, who is dominant in this movie, this movie has a handful of really good acting performances, I think, but Michelle Yeoh is, like, you can't take your eyes off her. Yeah, and I think this movie is one of those movies that it doesn't work nearly as well if you don't have somebody with a strong performance in that role. Yeah. Um, Because it it is so goofy and so chaotic and unhinged that it can kind of lose its soul if you don't have a great performance in that role. So uh, you are right. I completely agree with you in that, like, the further you get away from it, you you kind of lose some of those appreciations. I had forgotten how good her performance was Same. there, as well as the opposite, um, the, the actor's name. Kiwi Kwan. Kiwi Kwan. Uh, yeah, like, both of those incredible performances. So I'll bring him up, and he legitimately has become America's sweetheart over the last however many months, and I love that. I was not a uh, Indiana Jones person, so I do not have the appreciation of, oh my god, it's him that a lot of people had when they saw this movie, but I think... And I, I know this from talking to people who haven't even seen this movie yet. They root for this guy and they celebrate him because he is an example of having the talent and wanting to do the work and waiting and being willing to do whatever you can do. The roles just weren't there for him for such a long time. It's 30 years since he was first doing stuff with Steven Spielberg. And he I, I think that being a, a an Asian actor in America, he's acknowledged was a huge part of it. There just like weren't the roles for a long time. He became a stunt coordinator because he was such a movie junkie that he was like, I just want to be a part of this. Movies, yeah. And if you saw his Golden Globes acceptance speech, it was a great example of somebody making it about themselves. <laughs> like we everybody is rooting for this guy and everybody's so happy for him because there doesn't seem to be a like, oh, finally Mm -hmm. it's he's just so grateful and it's not like a jk simmons thing where he's a character actor and he's banging out five movies a year until in his late 50s he becomes a movie star which is a fantastic thing and we all that warmed everybody's that's still yeah that's still a good story is like working so hard in the smaller roles until you get your big break but it's there's a gap there between getting jobs and not getting jobs right right where he's like just Please let me do anything. Yeah. I'll do it. And then these two maniacs come up with this batshit movie and, so one and of call my... him for it. And he is incredible. In it. And he has to play like 300 different roles. Yeah. I mean, you said uh, like batshit maniacs. One of my notes is that like this movie has all the makings of like two druggy teenage filmmakers who just got a bunch of money and we're like now we can make all of our dreams come true and it, that's that what this movie feels like it's just like a fever dream of like uh immature filmmakers who also have like an unbelievable message attached to the movie as well and that's that's sort of what brings this whole thing around is like you can have all the goofy shit but it doesn't hit hit anywhere near as close as if it doesn't land the plane with the message that it sends about like existentialism and just like appreciating the small things and like family and the messages that are at the end of this movie will make you cry. Yes. Uh, Stephanie Sue and Jamie Lee Curtis are both long shots in the best supporting actress category. I don't say this disrespectfully. I think that they should be happy to be there. Mm-hmm. They, they were very good in these roles, but this is a category that has a pretty heavy favorite in Angela Bassett. And uh, I think that another dominant performance uh, with Carrie Condon. So I think that even in a category where I think it just speaks to this movie that even in a category that is spoken for, they still have two nominees. And Mm -hmm. I lastly want to mention someone who wasn't nominated, James Hong, 
who uh, a few weeks ago you said that our on our main podcast we should have a that guy draft mm -hmm. james hong who plays her father he'd be like a uh, like the 10th overall pick in a that guy draft yes i, I mean like the longevity of that guy is outrageous you know how old he is He's got to be like 95. He's 94 years old. I Good for me. 90, yeah, <laughs> great great call. You, you did go over, so you, you don't win any of the prizes. <laughs> okay, but uh, honestly, I've seen lesser performances and smaller performances nominated last year. Can you imagine being good at anything at 94 years old? Yeah, I, I, I would have this guy as uh, a Best Supporting Actor nominee over Judd Hirsch for the, the, the Fablemans. And... So that would be five. That'd be five actors into with a relatively small main cast, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Like I would really just throw everybody up except for J Jenny Slate. God bless her. Her role is just too small. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that if they win, Jenny Slate's on that stage? Uh, yeah, probably. Definitely. There's, there's, there's uh, she's a star in yeah. her own right, and there's not many people involved in this movie. And best picture, they they keep it. They, they do keep bring it everybody throughout the show. <laughs> Once you win Best Picture, and you know this because you saw all those La La Land people having to get <laughs> off the stage. It's true. When everybody gets up, and then you saw all the Moonlight people come up. What a what, what would that what a line change that was? <laughs> yeah. Did it bother you at all the um, the time allotment of the chapters in this movie? Because the first chapter is. Um, an hour and 28 minutes. Mm -hmm. Good boy. I love keeping the times of chapters. The second chapter is around 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the third chapter is two minutes. So the third chapter is, all right, see you later. Yeah, I right. do remember the first time I saw it, when it got to the third chapter, I was like, huh, we ain't done yet, huh? Well, oh, we are. Well, they, they, that is also after they have a false ending. Right. They have a false ending where you're like, oh, man, that's the, that's the end of the movie? That yeah. movie sucked. <laughs> if that's the ending. Um, no, and then I remember like forgetting that they were they were doing it in chapters because an hour and a half into it they're like here's chapter two and you're like oh yeah i forgot they were doing this shit <laughs> there's so much that happens that takes your attention away from the chapter factor it it's funny to me it seems unnecessary for them to do that i don't know why they ended up like doing it that way but it did like it did remind me of how jarring it was watching it again I reserve the right to change my mind after the SAG Awards, which would be lame. I like to get these out there uh, well in advance. And again, I will say that this, at, at, as of this recording, is the favorite to win Best Picture. Minus 300. Banshees is plus 500. All Quiet on the Western Front is plus 900. On the Avatar episode, we talk about how maybe you would want to stay away from All Quiet on the Western Front. Three of the last four years, and one of them I just didn't participate. We took that year off, but I still did see those movies. And uh, Nomadland and all those movies were just so like not amazing that I think I really didn't even participate in picking anything. Because I was like... Yeah, and then there isn't really a, a best picture caliber in this mix. This year's a different story. There's probably four or five yeah. that I would be cool seeing win. I wouldn't pick this as my as a best picture. Uh, I didn't love it nearly as much as everybody else did. I still think that it's like a really great movie, and uh, like to be able to say that means that we've had a pretty good year of movies. Is to say like a really great movie is not not to me like what I would want to win best picture, but uh, I do understand like if it wins, I'm not going to be mad just because like it, it does something completely different. It's going to stick with me forever from a technical standpoint. It's amazing. The performances are great, but I just like, it's not my, uh, it's not like my favorite movie of the year because again, it was so hard, not. hard for me to keep up. Yeah. With. But, but so I, I think we're saying different things. This isn't about liking it, not liking it. Um, in this instance, it's about like, have you gotten that feeling of, oh, this, this is, is the it. one they're yeah. going to give it no. to? Or like, this feels like the thing that people will like. Like if you're taking a test and it's multiple choice and you can just tell by the answers, you're like, this one sounds like it would be accepted as an answer. That's what this movie feels like to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. That's everything, everywhere, all at once. Check out the rest of our videos wherever you get them. Bye.